I am the contrarian and this is my world. Hi, my name is Bharat Nakhwal and I am here on The Contrarian to tell you how and why battery life and technology around batteries have evolved. It's always fun to have a conversation with Raji, but he has some crazy ideas about technology and I'm here to put them down. Battery technology, the one thing that's holding us all back. You've just seen an incredible documentary that tells us how frustrating it is. But think about this. Just maybe 10 years back, you had a phone, you called it a feature phone at that time, or just a mobile phone. Very few features, but what did it have as its biggest feature? Maybe three days of battery life. And here we are. Smartphones have hundreds of features, battery life. If you use them all, not even three to four hours. Conspiracy theories may be to one side, but a frustrating life in technology, that's what we live every single day. Because of what? One villain. Battery and battery technology and the battery life. Bharat here, of course, feels that we're all gung-ho about it and everything that we've spoken about till now doesn't resonate, am I right? Well, conspiracy theories are always good to believe, but I'll give you a moment to throw in the towel, go home, order a bucket of fried chicken and binge on it because you must call it quits because I've got this in the bag. So you're basically saying that you're, you're, you have this in the bag to the level that battery technology is awesome, it's amazing, you're living the perfect life and you don't want more. Battery technology is actually fitted in everything now. So you see batteries that were the size of motorcycle batteries, lithium-ion right. batteries. Say 10 years ago, when you're talking about that smartphone, that was the first time that lithium-ion battery, which is an 800 milliamp hour battery, thrown into a feature phone. And now that size is available in a 3500 battery, uh, milliamp hour battery, which is five times how bigger capacity. How many years did it take for that to shrink to that? It actually took eight years, but you have to think about the fact that other technologies have progressed faster because there is a lot less safety concerns around that technology. I mean, building a bigger display, the worst that can happen is that it will not work. But building a bigger battery, the worst that can happen is it can blow up in your pocket or in your face or something like that. Okay, so the first and foremost that you said is that battery technology didn't evolve because of security concerns. That's got to be the worst argument I can hear for a laggard technology, for a lazy, sleepy, and fairly crappy technology, which is battery itself. Have you not heard within the last 30 years of amazing technology that was reported upon? New chemistries, new ways that battery safely could be taken to 10 times its capacity. And suddenly that lab, that company, that university that was given a grant for that experimentation and R&D suddenly disappeared. Battery technology has progressed quite a lot. I mean, it's not become mainstream. Um, there could be reasons of conspiracy behind it, of course. But the fact is, today we have uh, technologies like uh, lithium sulfur, which is uh, laden with gra uh, graphene, which has five times the capacity of regular... Do you know the first time graphene as a chemical hmm. or a chemical property in a battery was spoken about was about 30 years back? Which is fine, but... They 30 years to do it. If you'd heard of the first LCD screen coming 12, 15 graphene years back, was only, look where we've reached. Graphene could only hold the charge. It could hold a high capacity charge for a very little time. The problem, lied, uh, the problem uh, lays in the fact that uh, to deliver this charge in a slow fashion was not possible for people. The technology. Now what they've done is they've taken this with lithium sulfur and they've used graphene so that you can charge the battery quickly, but it'll disperse in a regular fashion. And, and once again, the argument will be just wait another five years for it to come. Something no, so that we've been hearing... Lithium sulfur is coming out this year. My bet here is that you will not see it this year. Okay. You will not see it in 2015. It's the same as the re newspaper headlines for a medical breakthrough where they've tested it in rats and they say... So-and-so thing could eradicate cancer from humanity forever, hmm. but the test will take another 30 years. Battery technology has been the same. Fact of the matter is that today that battery technology doesn't exist, but doesn't mean that there is no evolution. It is said, Bharat, that technology can only move forward right. if everything contributes at the right time. Agreed. Which is why we say some things are before their time mm -hmm. and some things all come together at the right time. You're okay? unfortunately in a phase which is, uh, you know, like in limbo. <laughs> because You said it. I'm saying it because... You're just in that one phase or in that one year where battery technology has not evolved. It's you been saw like that for last, four years now last, and every year we hear Come the on, same Rajiv. Thing. When could you charge a phone 30% with just 30 seconds of charge? That technology we've just seen in the last year. That is an evolution that you're trying to ignore. The point is that technology will come in at the right time when it's ready. And of course, when companies are ready to put it out there. I'm sure there's some company sitting on technology 
that they don't want to give to people. Of course, because they want to make right. money. Does, do, does, do these companies, okay, it's talking about adapter, it's, we're talking about batteries, we're talking about using alternate sources, which means maybe it, the front of it's, the it's phone. It's a brilliant thing. I mean, if you talk about uh, uh, Tesla's CEO, he opened up all his technologies. Exactly. He's building paper Why batteries. Why did it take a company that was not from mainstream car manufacturers to break the greatest myth about car battery running? Because Why? Why was it an outsider? Because you have to, to understand from the beginning of automobile technology, the companies have been backed by petro, petro companies. So these people just can't say that, okay, you've held so us then, so then long. Why is it a conspiracy theory for you? Isn't it obvious? It's if, obvious. If, if everything that you, hmm. I mean, the entire countries run on petrodollars, an economy of epic proportions runs in the Middle East on petrodollars, why would they not kill battery technology? And why are you celebrating it here sitting today? Why are you happy that your because phone has six hours of battery? I'm right? not happy that my phone has six hours of battery. I'm you actually appalled by it. No, I'm, you I'm, seem to be thrilled. I'm appalled you by it. You seem to be very happy about the I, evolution. But I know the, for the fact that this was not possible six years ago. Even if I had everything else, the battery did not exist. The future essentially lies in tapping into bioelectricity. Tesla works with the paper battery company and uh, they opened up their patents and I was going through the patents and it, there's a very simple technology that they've built. Uh, paper is a separator and they've used bioelectrodes. So blood, even urine can be used as an electrode. The so battery. You have to pee into your phone, is that what you're proposing? Yes. You have to bleed into your phone, you, you have don't to cut have yourself to. to bits to... So these things don't need to be repowered. They'll, be, they'll work and function like your traditional batteries. So once you pee into your phone, it'll continue to work as a battery. Uh, till? Till the time your battery, it, it, it's been till tested. It dries, till it dries up? It's been tested for 10,000 re uh, recharges and it gives you 93% uh, conditioning after uh, the 10,000 recharges. So it's actually better than the technology that exists today. And it has been tested. We've seen prototypes. They are actually working on it. They've built cars, prototypes with it. What has been your argument? Biotechnology, sulfur, graphene, silicon maybe. My Everything is a promise of the future and you have no reason to tell me my why is, has it been terrible up till the last 30 years. The problem here is that you don't think of these things as a significant improvement. I do. So we're basically saying the two things that we believe on the contrary is one, companies are not willing to take the bet to bring in more expensive technology and cut their profits a little to bring better battery technology to yes, the world I and agree. maybe save the world, both from frustration and stress as well as the environment. That's right. one. And the second conspiracy theory is there must be some reason why in 30 years, new chemistry, new materials have all failed and the petrodollars and the price of fuel has always kept going up. Seems to be a bit of a connection. Now let's get down to the quick fire of it all. At this present moment, with redundant technology on your wrist and in your pocket on your phone, right. on a scale of 1 to 10, how satisfied are you with the product? Uh, if you're talking about battery life, yeah. I'm not satisfied. Okay, so not I, satisfied. I'd, That's I'd one. say good, good. Three at, to at, four. At least in the last few seconds of the show, you're being honest. Okay. I, I've Number always been honest. <laughs> Number two, is the entire ecosystem behind battery lasting, charging, and again going through the whole cycle convenient? the way it is today. See, it's not convenient, but it's getting there. Uh, wireless charging was not an option. I mean, it's not truly wireless, even today. I mean, you still, still need to touch, place it, right? right? So, I, I mean, I have seen a patent, uh, which again is a patent, coming back to your smile. Yeah, you, I, you I, can I see give it. me a future it's, technology. It's, it's, it's a patent, and of course, a company is holding on to it, where you, you just have to be in the vicinity of that. But it's also, so the, but the effect on the human body is still not. Yes, that's 100%. why it's so, not. So your safety, not, security, yes. well, I think, could come right yes. back. Yes, right? so okay. that is one technology that is still being explored. In most of your reviews that you write, right. that's before wearable technology, any wearable technology that needs to be charged the same as your phone, would you buy it not today? Not at all. You're basically saying, it's terrible technology, we're all suffering, but you're very happy with the way it's evolved. Is that the argument? No. There has been excellent evolution and I'm happy about it. Uh, I'm okay. unhappy about the present situation, but it's the near excellent future... the way it's evolved, but I hate where it's reached. Yes, because it's stopped in the middle. So that's pretty much the way it is. Battery technology right now still and always continues to be a promise for the future. A future where maybe one day you will plug your phone in, in 2014, and then plug it again in 2015. It may be fuel cell, it may be biotechnology, it may need you to do some things with your body to your phone. But one day, in the near future, you will have battery technology that is not frustrating, that is not stressful, that is not destroying the world. 
hopefully that day we'll be doing another show to thank bharat and all others who got us to that place thanks a lot we'll see you next week on the contrary thank you bharat again thanks thank you This is my world.